ago I saw a young buck um, had him in my crosshairs didn't have a clean shot and uh, let him keep walking he ended up going down in front of my dad's stand and my dad just shot twice And he sent me a text saying, brown down. So we got some meat in the freezer. That's good. Jake is sitting about 100 yards to my south. And he saw a deer earlier this morning and some coyotes I had a yote pouncing in the field in front of me presumably going after mice but I haven't had a shot at a deer yet I think I'm going to hang out for a little bit longer and uh, see if anything comes out and then I'll probably pack it up and go help dad with his deer and eat some lunch. Congratulations. Thank you. Little six pointer, but it's a pretty good body deer. Meat in the freezer. Mm -hmm. I had this guy in my sights and my crosshairs, but he was on the neighbor's property and there was some brush in between us, so I let him go. Could you see his stand from over there? No. And he just finally came walking up and then uh, got had my gun ready and he uh, heard the click of the, not the safety, but this part here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He heard that, and he stopped, and he looked up at me, and then uh, he started walking some more. And that time I pulled the gun up, and I had it on him. And then he just started to uh, run, so I shot got him there and then he ran over to the tree line there between the woods and me yeah and my gun wouldn't reload so I was fussing with that and then I, he turned around and started leaving that little wooded line and came back out into the field and then I got him a second time nice <laughs>
Power Freezer. Hard to pass up a nice easy shot like that. This year in our zone, we're allowed to, allowed to harvest a buck and two does each. My dad shot a six pointer yesterday. I just got my two toes. Actually, I can still see. I think I still see those three. Three deer up in that field. I'm looking at them through the woods, so it's kind of hard to tell. I'm gonna reach out to Dad. another one. So, yeah. I'm going to reach out to Dad quick and see if we want to sit longer or go and take care of those two, two does I just shot. out in the field in front of me where I shot those last two. I was just talking to Dad, and I think we're going to sit a little bit longer and wait and see if we get any bucks that come out. in my garage dang deer so if we shoot one more tonight my garage will be full I think those two does bedded down in the tall grass maybe about 75 yards away from me
screenshots, but you won't see anything. End of day two. Emmy, can you say deer? Say deer. <laughs> Alright, it's day five of Wisconsin's 2020 gun deer season. And Dad and I haven't been out since Sunday. We took Monday, Tuesday, and today we're taking off. Since we've got meat in the freezer, um, we've got other chores and whatnot to take care of back at home. So we'll be back out again as of right now, uh, Friday morning and maybe Saturday to try and get Jake on his first deer. Um, but for right now, we're gonna we're gonna butcher this guy up, so it's one last deer for us to handle later in the week. Um, when we were tracking these deer and came up on this little one, found out that it was a, a buck fawn, completely legal to harvest. It counts as an antlerless deer, not a buck. Had I known it was a buck fawn, I probably would have let it go. Um, it's just one more out of that generation of bucks that's not going to be around now, but as you can tell in my video, we had 
plenty of deer around us. Dad had 11 deer under his stand at one point. Um, so ultimately we're out there to harvest meat, to feed our families, and reduce the numbers of deer out on the out on our property because uh, they do a lot of egg damage for the farmers out there and we are in a CWD zone so the more deer there are the more chances of CWD spreading and causing a lot of issues weakening the the health of the herd out there so it's a matter of conservation and we've done our job so we're gonna get to it start butchering this little guy up and uh, Get some nice free range meat out of it and hopefully we can get on a big buck that we've got on our camera later this week or at the very least get Jake a deer, get his first deer for him. That'd be pretty pretty exciting. So we've got the hindquarters and the back straps and some miscellaneous little cuts that will grind up into uh, ground venison. So we're going to start cleaning up these cuts of deer here and uh, I'm going to save tallow this year. This is something I've never done before and I'm going to render it down to make uh, soaps. You can feed it to the chickens. It's good for them in the winter time. Um, I know some people use it as greases or lubricants on certain things but I'm not that uh, mountain man so I don't think I'll be doing that. But I'm sure there's other uses too that I will look into. But for now, we're gonna start cutting this stuff up. All right, I've got one of the back straps cleaned up here. This larger portion, which is uh, the neck would be up here, the rump would be down here. It gets wider as it goes down to the, to the rump. This is what I'll use to make, uh, I'll cut nice steaks out of it. This is really the prime cut on the deer, this and the tenderloins. You get some really nice steaks out of here. Um, the hindquarters, the legs, you can get some good ro uh, roasts that you can throw in a slow cooker. and. Uh, throw a bunch of veggies and stuff in there and make some good some good roasts out of that, stews. Um, a lot of the little stuff in here too will we'll grind up and in, in anything you use ground beef for you can make with uh, ground venison. We make a lot of jerky, big fans of jerky, so we use, uh, we take our ground meat without any fat, don't, don't keep any of the fat off the deer, it, it'll ruin the taste of your meat. If you're going to make burgers or something you can mix in pork fat. Um, is a common thing. I guess you could use beef fat too, probably. Uh, but we'll take the the scrap cuts of meat, just solid meat, grind it all down, and then we've got it looks like a caulk gun. It's a it's a jerky extruder, and we'll um, we'll mix in the seasoning first. We like to do it that way as opposed to whole cuts of meat because you can really mix in all the seasoning thoroughly and, and equally consistently throughout the meat. Mix in all the seasoning, pack your caulk gun, and then pack, um, extrude it out onto the dehydrator trays. Um, so that's what we're going to use all the, the little scraps of meat for primarily. It's probably jerky, but you can make, like I said, burgers and anything else with it too. All this sinew and, and garbage cuts that we're not going to eat, we'll give to the chickens and they'll, they'll eat it. Um, and this is the top portion of the back strap. So this would be up toward the head. This has a lot more sinew and little, um, not tendons, but sinew, I guess. So what I'm gonna do with this is cube it up and we'll probably end up grinding this portion of it because this, this is a nice, clean, thick cut of meat that we'll use for steaks uh, to eat whole. You can also take the, the roast and, and cube those up. I like to cube those and, and put them in stews just as little cubes of meat. Plenty of things you can do with it. One of the reasons that we choose to butcher our meat ourselves 
is number one, you know, well, I guess you're saving money. You're doing it yourself. It's a cost savings. Number two, you know you're getting your deer back. If you send your deer off to to be butchered by someone else, we've all heard stories of, well, I guess you just don't know if you're getting your deer back. You're, it's getting mixed in with other people's meat and stuff and you get back uh, a certain weight amount, I guess. But whatever, we don't have to worry about any of that when we do it ourselves. Um, and lastly, I, I think it's a it's a sign of respect to the animal. If I if I choose to take its life, then it's my responsibility to to see it through the whole process, make sure it's treated respectfully, and um, utilize as much of it as, as we can, and, and not waste, not not be too wasteful for the animal. So uh, that's why that's why we're butchering it ourselves, and we've done it that way for many years. Anything to add? No. Got a lot of work to do. A lot of work, yep. We got two other deer hanging out there, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, hopefully we can get Jake on his first deer. And so that'll be three three deer to butcher, but if Dad and I see that uh, that dream buck come out, pretty sure we're going to pull the trigger on that guy, so we'd have yet another deer to butcher. But I saved my vacation all year for hunting season for this reason, to cut up. <laughs> To cut to butcher it's not even a hunt it's to you spend more time cutting the deer up afterwards but it's a good time it's nice nice socializing bonding time for dad and i anybody else that joins us um yeah family tradition for many years and to come So I've cut the back straps into sections about this big that I will vacuum seal. And then when these get thawed, we can cut them to whatever size chunks we want. If I were to pre-cut them, their chances of getting frostbit, frostbitten in the freezer or having some uh, effect on their flavor would increase. So I like to leave them in bigger chunks to preserve the inside of that meat. Check to make sure that we got a good seal and it looks like we did. So on this package of meat now, I put the date of kill, my confirmation number, and then an identifier so I know what deer it is. Um, sometimes I'll just number them by which deer was killed first. Other times I'll write specifically if it was uh, the six point buck or the buck fawn in this case or the mature doe, whatever just so I know what deer it is. So there we go. We'll freeze this and it'll last years in the freezer this way. This is some of the meat that we cubed up. It's got some sinew on it still. Cleaned up as much as we could. Um, I'm going to send this through the meat grinder and make ground venison with it. I like to send it through once and then send it through a second time to really break everything up, grind it up really well. Uh, and then we'll package it up, vacuum seal it. I usually seal them at two to four pounds a piece because that's usually how much jerky I make at a time, two to four pounds. Um, and then we can also do some single one pound packages to make, uh, like if you want to make a one pound of uh, taco meat or chili or something like that, that's nice and handy to have and thaw. So I'll get started on that. I don't have any in this time, but if I had some pork fat, this would be a good time to grind them together and mix in that pork fat um, if you wanted to add fat to your meat. I like to press them nice and flat like that so they freeze and you can stack them on top of each other and they don't fall all over, take up too much space in the freezer that way. 
These are some of the scraps that we got from the hindquarters on that deer. So I'm going to run this out and give it to the chickens. This is the poop of a deer. The only way this poop could have shown up here is if a deer was here, but it's not here anymore. This is a hoof print. There used to be a deer standing in it, but not anymore. They're all gone. Well, Jake, that's the end of day seven for us. How did it go? <laughs> it's been going good. It's going good? Didn't see anything today, huh? <laughs> Nothing. We'll be back out tomorrow afternoon. We'll saw get something for you then. I saw an owl. Jake saw an owl. You don't hear owls, so you have to see them. You gotta see them, because they're silent. In the sky, flying. Yeah, not when they make hooing calls. Yeah, when they when they hoot, you can hear them then, right? Hear them then. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. done for man. Good job. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Congratulations, Jake. Thanks. First year hunting, first season, first deer. Meet in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. Are you hooked? Yeah. I just need to calm down. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. about 3.30 on November 29th. The ninth and final day of Wisconsin's gun deer season. Uh, Dad, Jake, and I stayed home today and finished butchering the last two deer we had hanging, bringing our total to four deer this season. There's an antlerless only hunt and an antlerless only holiday hunt. There's two two other hunts yet this year. Um, so I, I used both of my antlerless tags, but Jake has one left and Dad has two left. So we will probably still go out for those hunts and see if we can harvest anything else. Man, what a season though. It's uh, It was really cool getting to sit with Jake. Um, he actually 
he did not grow up in a family that did any hunting in his youth, whereas I I, I did. I've, I've hunted my whole life. Um, so I, I don't know any difference. I've, I've always been a hunter, and I always will be, but to, to bring somebody from the outside into our culture, um, it was a pretty cool experience. Very happy that we were able to get him his first deer. Um, it was about a 120 yard shot freehand with a rifle that he had never shot before. It was my Remington 30 out six. Fantastic gun. I it's it's very accurate and uh, I've I've not had any issues with that gun. So, all things considered, Jake did a really good job. Jake, I'm proud of you. I'm happy to uh, to have you on our on our hunting team. Be fun to share more experiences with you in the future. You did a good job. Having the chickens has been. Uh, has been really nice. Um, all the scraps that we cut off the meat, the sinew and everything that we're not going to eat, would we would typically just toss in the garbage and it would in, end up in a landfill. Um, but now all those scraps, I can, I have a couple of bags frozen that I'll be able to pull out throughout the year now, throughout next year too. Um, but we just take the scraps out to the chickens. The chickens will eat it up. The stuff that we won't eat. They'll convert that energy that they consumed and those proteins and nutrients into egg production. And then ultimately we will end up eating those eggs. So it's uh, that those deer scraps haven't gone to waste. Um, and it saves us on the cost of chicken feed too. So it's, it's pretty nice having that uh, here on our homestead now that I haven't had chickens in years past. So that's... Uh, a great feature to our property now. Very happy about that. Well, I'm uh, I'm pretty exhausted. So, I saved the last pound of ground venison from my dough, and I'm gonna add some beef tallow to it, throw it on the stovetop, and brown it, and make some venison tacos because I'm starving. That's what it's all about. Putting putting meat on the table for the family. Some 100% self-sourced. Call it organic if you want. Um, lean protein. It's good stuff. While I've got that taco meat browning, I figured I should also mention that we do keep a sample from each deer to send into the Wisconsin DNR for CWD testing since we are in a chronic wasting disease uh, zone in our state. Fortunately, we've never had a deer come back positive, but it's, uh, it's good peace of mind and it helps the DNR track the spread of C CWD should any of our deer test positive. Um, but I will be taking those in sometime later this week. For now, I'm going to go enjoy my tacos and relax the rest of the day. Unfortunately, I don't have all the ingredients to make some deluxe tacos, but I'm so hungry right now, I don't even care. A little bit of sour cream, some venison meat, cheese, some pickled jalapenos from the garden, and taco sauce. That'll do.